Hey, this is John Garrett, hypertransitory.com, and uh, to continue on with the Illustrator logo series, uh, I want to talk about some of the best practices, maybe, and tips that uh, you can use um, while using Illustrator um, to create your logo. And I talked a little bit earlier about using layers, and um, that is really going to be one of your most powerful tools to complete your projects and organize your projects. Now, um, uh, the layers palette here, what I talked about before was you know, showing and hiding things in, on the layers. Like if you don't want uh, something to print, you know, I can go here and uncheck print, and now this is not going to print. And you can see it's italicized there. But um, turning that back on, but uh, one thing people don't know too is that I can, uh, they call this the drill down, I can get to the specific items on that layer so you can see that each of these letters um, is represented here and when I choose or I'll use my other tool for that my uh, group tool so when I choose one of them it's gonna show me which layer I've got here and that's you know kind of powerful sometimes when a, a, a design gets really complex you um, and you're trying to find a certain element or a certain item and you can drill down and you, you can find it and you know you can click this button and select it and uh, so that that usually works out very well for me um, one thing too that's good about the layers palette um, let's go to our links palette here now remember these raster graphics from before um, now normally your links when you've got a flat file you can see the name of it here but this one doesn't have a name and that is because it is a PSD that I brought in that is transparent and you're gonna want to bring those in I mean if you do need to have a raster with a transparent background I you know I usually will bring in a PSD works fine except that sometimes it's hard to track it wait a minute which file is this especially if you embed it and you might need to go find that file again and say wait a minute what was the what was the name of that file now I you know I don't know I may not have all these up here to know what this is so the links palette kind of fails at keeping track of that but the layers palette will keep track of it as we can see here and uh, I think I've hidden that yeah so now it's unhidden and here it is and I can see the name of that PSD file that I brought in so that's something good that the the layers palette is good for is keeping track of those transparent um, PSDs and I, I believe transparent tips too will show up here and probably not in the um, layers palette or in the links palette so that's with that uh, and another thing you can see that I'm you know I'm calling up this layers palette and getting rid of it and I have done that by customizing my keyboard shortcuts and that is a uh, it's something I recommend for everyone to do I mean when you are first getting started maybe you don't you know you don't know the keyboard shortcuts yet and you should get to know those I mean when you mouse over something it'll tell you hey V that's that's gonna be selected with a V and this is selected with P so you know get used to using those it, it makes you work a lot faster and when you find yourself doing something over and over again and if the keyboard shortcuts don't work for you or if there isn't one for a certain thing you want to do uh, you need to go down here under the edit menu to the keyboard shortcuts and change those change them to what you want there's no reason to work uh, in a way that doesn't work for you so um, as we can see I mean this group selection tool it didn't really have a uh, selection these are my shortcuts if I go back to the defaults you can see there's not one there but uh, I saved my own set of shortcuts uh, Illustrator won't let you write over these defaults it's gonna force you to make a new copy which is good so I just named them JG shortcuts and this is one of mine and you, as you can see this is the tools menu so everything that's here is represented here represented in the tools menu and I can change those to pretty much whatever I want um, and if I conflict with something it's gonna let me know hey that's conflicting you know so now see it's telling me that uh, hey you already used this and I'll say oh you know fine clear it you know whatever or if I want to change it I can change it and go to the next one so I'm gonna put that back there uh, but um I can also go to my menu commands and if you look under the file menu I put in a few in there save a copy is one that I like to do so I'll just hit the F4 key for that 
uh, export another one I do often F5 um, because uh, you know I don't want to keep getting command shift option whatever they want to use for their keyboard shortcuts not good enough for me and there's some things maybe you got a series of things you need to save um, or, or you want to keep doing the same thing over again that's when you're going to use your action palette uh, which you know is found here in actions uh, a lot of times you can save a series of steps as an action so let's say that I want to you know I want to bring in this logo and I always want to move it up to the top or something so uh, what I would do actually this shows kind of a annoyance of Illustrator you know it always starts from the bottom it's zero zero is down at the bottom instead of the top like every other you know layout or design program in the world but anyway you can change it by dragging that those zeros out here so uh, let's say I want to make a new action I mean here's my default so I'm gonna make a new set first and I'm gonna I'll just call that JG actions so now I got a new set to make my new actions in and this is gonna make me a new action and let's just call it you know, top left and it's saved in the JG actions and here's where I can assign a keyboard shortcut to that so I'm gonna assign it F1 and here if there's something that's conflicting it will it will choose one of these for you and say hey we already got an F1 so you're gonna have to hit shift F1 to use it but right now I don't have anything conflicting so I'm gonna get that F1 so I'm gonna record and right now it's recording everything so to me I'm gonna go over to my transform palette I'm gonna choose here in this indicator here I'm gonna set my reference point to the top so I wanna have this top left be what's what's affected here and I'm gonna put that X at zero and I'm gonna put my Y point at zero which is now up at the top so that's where it's gonna go and you know back in my actions palette I'm gonna hit the stop button so we can see that uh, three things have happened I've set my reference point set my X point and then set my Y point so you know if I move that back and remember I changed it to uh, I changed that one to F1 so if, you know if I hit my F1 key it's gonna go and do that again and even if I grab this one um, it's gonna force that up there and uh, you know one time I had a, a project where it was just you know a bunch of uh, pictures that had to be at a specific point you know here 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 and here and you know I had like 80 of them to do with like 10 in each one and after the second one you know I can't just keep doing this so I made actions for specific points and you know got it done in, in relatively short time now the one thing about these actions they will override your keyboard shortcut so uh, I believe there is an F1 in here uh, somewhere it might be in the menu commands uh, I can't remember if it's in the help file or one of those things is F1 but uh, as you can see my action over overrode that so that's something you're gonna have to be careful of um, sometimes you might forget and you'll use an action and then you'll be expecting something to happen later on and your action is gonna run instead so uh, even if I chose something for F5 which I have export you know I might be expecting an export to happen but whatever I assign that action to override that and that you know you'll be surprised but you probably go back and figure it out later uh, you know a final thing I want to talk about is is uh, I like to use a uh, a, uh, a tablet instead of a mouse I know a lot of people are using a using a mouse three button mouse and I, and I use a, a, a Wacom tablet and uh, I used to pronounce that Wacom <laughs> W-A-C-O-M but but uh, uh, I understand it's pronounced Wacom. I believe it's a Japanese company, but I use a Intu Intuos 3 tablet, pen and tablet. And, it, you know, it's a bit difficult to get used to, but uh, uh, I really uh, enjoy using it uh, much better than a mouse. I can barely use a mouse now for anything. And uh, this thing, it does help with carpal tunnel as well. And I'm just much more efficient with it. I got buttons and all kind of buttons up the wazoo. So, uh it really does help with efficiency but so uh, that's just a few tips right now that uh, might help you in your projects and help you just with any projects logos or not uh, to help you organize and, and help you uh, be more efficient when using Illustrator.